In the flat earth model, the sun and moon luminaries revolve around the earth, illuminating like spotlights the areas over which they pass. The sun's annual corkscrew journey begins at the Tropic of Capricorn on the winter solstice, where it makes its fastest and largest circle over and around the earth. For the next three months, every day the sun slightly narrows its path and slows its speed, until by the spring equinox the sun has spiraled its way from the Tropic of Capricorn to the equator. Then for the next three months, again every day, the sun continues to slightly constrict its path and retard its speed, until the summer solstice, when the sun makes its smallest, slowest circle around the Tropic of Cancer. Once the sun reaches this innermost circle, it then begins its opposing, expanding, quickening journey back toward the Tropic of Capricorn. For the next three months, every day the sun slightly widens its path and hastens its speed, until by the autumnal equinox the sun has spiraled its way from the Tropic of Cancer back to the equator. Then for the next three months, again every day the sun continues to slightly expand its path and increase its speed until the winter solstice, when the sun repeats its largest, fastest circle around the Tropic of Capricorn, and the annual corkscrew journey begins again. Thomas Winship wrote, The earth is a stretched out structure, which diverges from the central north in all directions towards the south. The equator, being midway between the north center and the southern circumference, divides the course of the sun into north and south declination. The longest circle round the world which the sun makes is when it has reached its greatest southern declination. Gradually going northwards, the circle is contracted. In about three months, after the southern extremity of its path has been reached, the sun makes a circle round the equator. Still pursuing a northerly course as it goes round and above the world, in another three months, the greatest northern declination is reached, when the sun again begins to go towards the south. In north latitudes, when the sun is going north, it rises earlier each day, is higher at noon, and sets later, while in southern latitudes, at the same time, the sun, as a matter of course, rises later, reaches a lesser altitude at noon, and sets earlier. In northern latitudes, during the southern summer, say from September to December, the sun rises later each day, is lower at noon, and sets earlier, while in the south, he rises earlier, reaches a higher altitude at noon, and sets later each day. This movement round the earth daily is the cause of the alternations of day and night, while his northerly and southerly courses produce the seasons. When the sun is south of the equator, it is summer in the south, and winter in the north, and vice versa. The fact of the alternation of the seasons flatly contradicts the Newtonian delusion that the earth revolves in an orbit round the sun. It is said that summer is caused by the earth being nearest the sun, and winter by its being farthest from the sun. But if the reader will follow the argument in any textbook, he will see that according to the theory, when the earth is nearest the sun, there must be summer in both northern and southern latitudes, and in like manner, when it is farthest from the sun, it must be winter all over the earth at the same time, because the whole of the globe earth would then be farthest from the sun. In short, it is impossible to account for the recurrence of seasons on the assumption that the earth is globular and that it revolves in an orbit around the sun. Gabrielle Henriette wrote, The essential feature of the year is its division into two equal periods of six months, based first on the predominating length of the days over that of the nights, and vice versa, conditions which are governed by the varying hours of sunrise and sunset, and secondly, by the either high or low height reached by the sun in the heavens at midday. The first cycle, during which the days are longer than the nights, and the sun reaches its culminating point of the year, extends from the spring equinox to the autumn equinox, March 21st to September 22nd and the second cycle, during which, inversely, the duration of the nights exceeds that of the days, and the sun descends to its lowest point of the year, extends from the autumn equinox to the spring equinox, September 23rd to March 20th. These two six-month periods are also characterized by an opposition of temperature. During the first cycle, 
which corresponds to spring and summer, the heat gradually rises and falls, while during the second cycle, which comprises autumn and winter, it is the intensity of the cold which progressively increases and decreases. Dr. Samuel Robotham wrote, If the sun is fixed, and the earth revolves underneath it, the same phenomena would exist at the same distance on each side of the equator. But such is not the case. What can operate to cause the twilight in New Zealand to be so much more sudden, or the nights so much colder than in England? The southern hemisphere cannot revolve more rapidly than the northern. The latitudes are about the same, and the distance round a globe would be the same at 50 degrees south as at 50 degrees north, and as the whole would revolve once in 24 hours, the surface at the two places would pass underneath the sun with the same velocity, and the light would approach in the morning and recede in the evening in exactly the same manner. Yet the very contrary is the fact. The constant sunlight of the north develops with the utmost rapidity numerous forms of vegetable life and furnishes subsistence for millions of living creatures. But in the south, where the sunlight never dwells or lingers about a central region, but rapidly sweeps over sea and land to complete in twenty-four hours the great circle of the southern circumference, it has not time to excite and stimulate the surface, and therefore, even in comparatively low southern latitudes, everything wears an aspect of desolation. These differences in the north and south could not exist if the earth were a globe, turning upon axes under a non-moving sun. The two hemispheres would, at the same latitudes, have the same degree of light and heat, and the same general phenomena, both in kind and degree. The peculiarities which are found in the south, as compared with the north, are only such as could exist upon a stationary plane, having a northern center, concentric with which is the path of the moving sun.